All right, so the first FRQ you run into AP Physics 1 on the exam is going to be the Mathematical Routines FRQ here. So um, this is a pretty standard one. This would be most derivation analysis, probably the closest to a textbook problem that you'll run into. You may draw a free body diagram. You may justify something. But in generally, like... Um, um, you, you're going to use principles, you may justify a claim, a little bit of stuff, but for the primary part is just make sure you can correctly analyze a scenario mathematically, okay? So let's take a look at this. So experiment one, um, students release a disc of mass M and radius R from the top of a ramp that makes an angle theta with the horizontal. The disc rolls without slipping, and the rotational inertia of the disc is given by this, so rolls without slipping. The diagram drawn label represent the forces that are exerted on the disc as it rolls down the ramp, which is indicated by the dashed line. For each force, a uh, diagram must be distinct by a distinct arrow starting on and pointing away from the which the force, uh, the point at which the force exerted on the disc. So this is a torque rotation kind of problem. We need to draw the free body diagram. We need to draw where the forces are acting. So on here we have gravity is always our first one, and that acts at the center of mass of the object. So you can call it mg. Then what's touching it is the ramp is touching it. That exerts a normal force perpendicular to the surface. Okay. And then also touching that surface must be some friction here. And that has to be this direction. And it's static friction because it rolls without slipping. That implies static friction. If there's any friction at all, it would be static because it's not rubbing against the surface. And that's because it's one going to cause it to slow down, but it's mostly going to cause an angular acceleration in that direction. Okay, and so that is everything. That's everything touching the object, so we're done with the free body diagram. Determine expression for the net torque exerted on the disc around the center in terms of here. So when we are doing our rotational, uh, doing torque, we got to identify the axis of rotation, which is right here, the center of the object, because they said around the center. That means that's the axis of rotation. And then we're going to do... Uh, we're going to go for every force identify. Well, so let's say clockwise is the positive direction here. Okay, so gravity doesn't exert any torque because it's acting at r equals zero. How about the normal force? Well, remember, we draw our r vector from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied, and the normal force is at the physical contact there. That r is parallel to the normal force, so the normal force doesn't exert any torque either. How about the frictional force? Well, that r vector is R and it's perpendicular to that force. So our only torque, when I do net torque equals I alpha, they want the net torque portion. It's equal to the force of friction times R. Now, this is in terms of force of friction M and R. So that's it. So the net torque just equals that right there. Okay. Determine an expression for the net force uh, exerted on the disc in terms of here, the net force. So now we're going to do... Um, the net force. Well, which way is the acceleration? The acceleration, what's well, going to roll down the ramp, the acceleration is this way. So now we're going to decompose the forces into the x and y direction. Now, there's no acceleration in the y direction, so the net force is zero in the y direction. Okay, But in the x direction, you want to decompose the forces, and we would decompose mg uh, into, it's like an inclined plane, mg cosine theta. Here's theta and mg sine theta. So then if I look at our net force down the ramp, make parallel to the ramp positive direction, we have mg sine theta down the ramp, and we have force of friction up the ramp. So the net force is just going to equal that. Okay. Uh, did, let's see. Then determine uh, expression for the translational acceleration of the center mass of the disk. Express your answer in terms of m theta, and r as appropriate. Begin your derivation by writing a fundamental principle. Okay, so what do we do after we do a free body diagram? We do F net equals ma, and in this case, we also do net torque equals I alpha. Okay, now notice we can't use the frictional force in here. No force of friction is allowed in here. So that means mg sine theta minus the force of friction is equal to ma, and the net torque is going to be the force of friction times r, is going to be the rotational inertia, which is 1 half mr squared, because they told us that in the problem, that the rotational inertia of that was mr squared, and then times alpha. Now, we got to get rid of the frictional force, so we're going to divide by r here. So the frictional force is 1 half mr times alpha, just dividing both sides or canceling one of the r's. So you can plug that into here, but the problem here is going to be that we have... 
alpha and A, right? And I want to know the acceleration. However, because we are rolling without slipping, one of the things, what is the rolling without slipping? It tells us that the velocity of the center of mass is equal to um, R times omega, and the acceleration of the center mass is R times alpha. So we want to make sure we plug that in here. This R times alpha is the acceleration of the center mass. It is A. So then we have mg sine theta. Move this over is going to be ma plus 1 half ma. And that's going to be 3 halves ma. M's cancel. And then you can divide by th 3 halves or multiply by 2 thirds. But the acceleration is then going to be 2 thirds g sine theta. Like that. Okay, in experiment one, the disc reaches the bottom of the ramp at time t disc. In experiment two, the students release a block of ice from rest, same height. The friction between the block and the ramp. So there's no friction here, but there is friction here. Okay, the block reaches the bottom in t block. Is t disc greater than, less than, or equal to t block? Well, if we think about it from our, you know, uh, you could either do the analysis again, but you think about just from our forces, right? This thing had a frictional force up the ramp. This one doesn't have any friction because there's no friction here. So this one is going to have more force down the ramp than this guy, right? This guy's going to have mg, normal force, and then the frictional force. The frictional force is going to slow it down. So ultimately, um, the time for the block to reach it is going to be less than the disk. And that's because there's no friction on the block. So the net force down the ramp is greater. Ramp is greater. And you need to imply, what, what does that affect? Which means it has a larger acceleration. Has a larger acceleration down the ramp, down the ramp. So it will reach it, and so it will reach the bottom faster. Okay, just make a quick couple of sentences to just justify based on your physics principles, and that's it.